again occurred. After this, the Earth emerged from the darkness. 13 the Earth and its future. The fourth principal stage of human development is lived on Earth. This is that condition of consciousness in which man finds himself at present. But before he attained it, he, and with him the whole Earth, first had to repeat successively the Saturn, Sun, and Moon stages in three smaller cycles, the so-called, grounds, of Theosophical literature. Man now lives in the fourth Earth cycle. He has already advanced a little past the middle of this cycle. At this stage of consciousness man no longer perceives in a dreamlike manner the images which arise in his soul through the influence of his environment only, but objects appear to him, outside in space. On the moon and also during the stages of repetition on earth, there arose for example, a colored image in his soul when a particular object came near him. All of consciousness consisted of such images, tones, and so forth, which flowed and ebbed in the soul. Only with the appearance of the fourth condition of consciousness does color no longer appear merely in the soul, but on an external, spatially circumscribed object, sound is no longer merely an inner reverberating of the soul, but the resounding of an object in space. In mystery science therefore, one also calls this force, the earthly condition of consciousness, the subjective consciousness. It has been formed slowly gradually in the course of development in the way that the physical organs of sense slowly arose and thus made perceptible the most diverse sensory qualities in external objects. Apart from the senses which are already developed, others exist in an as yet germinal state which will become fully developed in the subsequent Earth period, and which will show the world of the senses in a diversity still greater than is the case today. The gradual growth of this Earth consciousness has been described in the preceding pages, and in the discussions which are to follow this description will be amplified and supplemented in essential points. The colored world, the sounding world, and so forth, which earlier man had perceived within himself, confront him outside in space during his life on Earth. But on the other hand, a new world appears within him, the world of ideas or thoughts. One cannot speak of ideas and thoughts in relation to the moon consciousness. The latter consists solely of the images we have described. Around the middle of the development of Earth, although this state of affairs was already preparing itself at a somewhat earlier time, there developed in man the capacity to form ideas and thoughts about objects. This capacity constitutes the basis for memory and for self-consciousness. Only conceptualizing man can develop a memory of that which he has received, and only thinking man reaches the point where he differentiates himself from his environment as an independent, self-conscious being, where he recognizes himself as an I. The first three stages we have described were stages of consciousness, the fourth is not only consciousness, but self-consciousness. But within the self-consciousness, the present-day life of thought, there is already developing a disposition towards still higher states of consciousness. Man will live through these states of consciousness on the next planet into which the Earth will change after its present form. It is not absurd to say something about these future conditions of consciousness, and there was about life on the following planet. For in the first place, the clairvoyant, 
for certain reasons which are to be given elsewhere, strides ahead of his fellows in his development. Thus those states of consciousness which all of mankind must attain with the advance of planetary development are already developing in him at this time. In the consciousness of the clairvoyant one finds an image of the future stages of mankind. Moreover, the three subsequent conditions of consciousness are now already present in all men in germinal states, and clairvoyant research has means for indicating what will emerge from these germinal states. When it is said that the clairvoyant is already developing in himself the states of consciousness to which in future all of mankind will advance, this must be understood with one restriction. The clairvoyant, for example, is developing a seeing in the spiritual world today which in future will appear in man in a physical way. But this future physical condition of man will be a faithful likeness of the corresponding contemporary spiritual one in the clairvoyant. The earth itself is going to develop and therefore quite different forms from those which exist today will appear in its future physical inhabitants, but these physical forms are being prepared in the spiritual and mental ones of today. For example, what the clairvoyant today sees in the form of a cloud of light and color around the human physical body is a so-called aura, will later change into a physical form, and other organs of sense than those of today will give the man of the future the capacity to perceive other forms. However, already today the clairvoyant sees the spiritual models of the later material entities with his spiritual senses thus for example, the aura. A view into the future is possible for him, although it is very difficult to give an idea of the character of this view through the language of today and for present-day human conceptions. The conceptions of the present state of consciousness are shadowy and pale in comparison with the colorful and sounding objects of the external world. Man therefore speaks with conceptions as of something which is not real. A mere thought is contrasted with an object or a being which is real because it can be perceived through the senses.